Hey, my name is Matt Whitman. This is the No Dumb Questions podcast. I'm joined by my friend, Destin Sandlin, who's cleaning his garage. And this is the first time I've had to do the intro for the podcast. So I'm really excited to get past the formal part where I sound like I'm doing an intro and just talk to Destin. Destin, is your ridiculous setup working? It is. I have three microphones. Um, two are safety pinned to my chest, and one is on the bill of my hat. And the thought is I can... Uh, I'm not actually cleaning the garage. I'm setting up the next experiment in my garage. We're trying to do a podcast, and I have questions for you and stuff, but let me start with a question that doesn't matter. What's the weather like there? Right now, it's rainy. There's a little bit of wind. Actually, we can go out. Seriously, this setup is completely mobile, so I should be able to actually go on top of my house right now. Okay, I'm outside, and I'm climbing on a ladder. On top of your house? Yeah, I'm not on the house yet. So you just always have access to the on top of your house part of your house? I am on top of my house. There's actually a gap between my house and my garage. You should be able to hear wind. And you that know. required no extra setup for you to just walk on top of your house. I'm on, on my house. Actually, I just, I just jumped to my garage. And you say you're from the American South? <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> yeah, here we don't, we, don't, we don't have unlimited access to the roof. It's if, something that takes time to set up and you know, forethought. If you had to guess what I'm doing right now on top of my roof, what would it be? Interpretive dancing. No, I'm uh, part of my Christmas light setup fell down, so I'm fixing it. <laughs> oh, your um, kind of looks like Pink Floyd, your prism setup? Yeah, yeah, it fell down, so I'm fixing it. I'm getting off the roof now. It's windy, so I'm going back to the garage. Anyway, go ahead. So we had this crazy freak midwinter warm-up in the middle of our horrible coldness, and now the warm-up is going away, and this ice hurricane kicked up on my way over here. It's almost freaky to go outside. I, I ran out from my house, and I got in the Jeep, and when I slammed the door... I giggled like I used to when I was 10 and running from my sister when she was chasing me around the house and I'd, I'd find like a bathroom to lock myself in because I felt like I was escaping with this dangerous weather thing. You drive across town, there's just this horizontal ice wind. You can see the wind because of the ice in it rolling off the mountains. It is like the whole place is shaking even now. It's, it's pretty cool. You're talking about Wyoming, right? I live in Wyoming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, so well, you context go on the roof help people. And, <laughs> so, yeah, I I mean, I have no sympathy. You choose to live there, whatever. It's only like 50 degrees here. It's great. We saw m minus 26 this week. Are you serious? Yep, we had five of the 11 coldest cities on Earth four or five days ago at a given moment in Wyoming. Just an update on what I'm doing in the garage. I just threw the, uh, I just set the high-speed camera up on the tripod. I've got it about five feet high. And um, I got a bunch of lights, and I'm about to set these lights up. These are lights I really got a good deal on. So I'm excited about that. They're flicker-free. So that's what I'm doing. Are you making a video, or are you just screwing around? Um, so I did the Prince Ripper Strop versus Bullet, and everybody's asking, you know, what would happen if you shot this kind of bullet, that kind of bullet? And the problem is you have to have direct sunlight in order to, to video something that fast. And so replicating sunlight is very difficult. So... What I have done is I've gone back to a light source that I used on the um, the breaking spaghetti video. It's it's called a North Star. It's, it's a single tungsten halogen bulb that, anyway, I recorded a quarter million frames per second with it, and I haven't been able to replicate it. So, you know, rented a bunch of these really fancy lights trying to find something that was fast enough that wouldn't flicker for the high-speed camera, and nothing worked. So I went back to try to find the North Star light, and I found five of them on eBay for the price of one that was new. So I'm setting those up. I'm really excited. So the high-speed camera, how many frames will this thing shoot at, at, at in optimal lighting? Um, well, sunlight is the best. You, I mean, it's really hard to get a light source that's as, as good as the sun. And you can do full HD, you can do 28,000 frames per second. But if you, if you, like, neck down the resolution... You know, you've got this chip, right? It's 1280 by 800 pixels. But you can isolate different portions of the chip. And if since you're just writing ones and zeros, you can just choose to write different ones and zeros, if that makes any sense. So instead of writing ones and zeros for the whole image on the chip, you just pick a small square of it. And so that means you can have a faster frame rate. The problem with a high-speed camera is that you have a very short exposure time, so it has to be very sensitive. But then after you expose the chip, 
you then have to write that information. That's called the integration time. And so what we're doing here is you got to throw enough light into those into that sensor quick enough in order to, you know, create gain on that chip in order to get information. And the problem with what I've got here is a uh, it's a color camera, so it's got a filter on the front. You know, all cameras are monochrome. So every camera is just a sensor. It's a light sensor, and most color cameras have what's called a Bayer filter on the front of the sensor, and it's just a red, green, blue matrix of little filters that let RGB through. I assume that it just since things are in color, that when you take pictures of it, they're in color. No. But you're telling me that's not natural. No, no, no. So the way the way most cameras work is it's just a, like, for example, people that take pictures of the stars, they will have a single sensor and then they put different color filters in front of it to filter out all the rest of the light. So they'll, they'll you know, put the filter to, in front of the sensor to filter out everything but red, and then they'll rotate to a different filter and filter out everything but blue, and they'll do the same with green, and then they composite those images together to create a full color image. That makes a ton of sense, and it's why it doesn't work when I point my phone at the sky and set it to auto and push <laughs> take picture. <laughs> well, so, n- those are some bad pictures. <laughs> yeah, those are just bad pictures. Anyway, that's enough about that. But that's what I'm doing. I'm setting up I'm setting up a bunch of lights. It's going to be five times the light, the most light I've ever used. The, see, the problem is if you use artificial light, you know, the, the power coming out of your house is like a 60 hertz signal. So every 16 milliseconds, you get this flicker of power. Well, if you don't have enough uh, heat on that filament or whatever it is you're heating up, it'll it'll turn off and back on. Or in the case of like a tungsten bulb, it'll cool off and then heat back up. And you'll see that flicker, and it kind of makes you sick with a high-speed camera. Yeah, at 80 bazillion frames, you're going to notice it. Exactly. So what I'm using is a, a special bulb. It's like an old projector. You remember the projectors in like high school that you know they would get out and write on transparencies? Absolutely. Yeah. That. That's what I'm using. It's an AV photo bulb. So what have you done to get around the flicker problem in the past when you were shooting inside? So, in the past, you you just have to shoot at a slow enough frame rate so that it's not a factor, you know. It, you, or you can shoot at m- multiples of the flicker rate. You know, you can get in sync with the flicker rate so that you're always exposed at the peak. That's one thing you can do. That's really hard to do. Can you clip frames on the flicker in post? You can. I've done that. It looks pretty bad. In fact, um, I recently filmed a, an engine like an internal combustion engine in high speed. And the only source we had, I, these guys told me they could get these bulbs up there and they couldn't. And so the only sources we had were flickering. And so I'm going to have to figure that out. I've got to figure out how to smooth out the flicker. But yeah, it is possible. It's just very labor intensive. So is this the first time you're turning on these lights? It is. Um, I just turned one of the five on and it worked. So what I'm doing now is I'm going through the lights one by one to make sure they actually work. And so, so far, one of the five works. You don't understand, oh, two of the five works. You don't understand how big of a deal this is. Um, these lights are $600 a piece. I found them on eBay for $100 a piece. I think I have the reverse of that story happening to me right now. What do you mean? I got a mystery email today from a dude who I don't know, and I'm going to call it 7030 Scam. Yeah, that's my guess. I'm probably not scam. I think it's somebody having fun with me, which is awesome because this is elaborate and brilliant. And because of how much effort and thought they put into it, I'm going all the way down this road with them. They deserve the payoff. Hey, this episode of No Dumb Questions is brought to you by our own Twitter account. You should completely go there and follow us on Twitter where you'll get things like tweets. So if that sounds good to you, hustle on over to Twitter Join us on the tweet hole at no dumb cues. Once again, that's at no dumb cues. So backstory, um, you know the answer to this quiz. What is the one thing that always adorns my desk in my office? The the stupid manatee that I hate. Okay, you watch your mouth, Dustin <laughs> Sandlin. That manatee is a work of art. It's a precious work of art. Is this about the manatee? It is about the manatee. The email was about the manatee. I don't know this guy. So he shoots me an email, or he doesn't email me. He emails my office through our just general con- contact email. Wait, like your 
your your church? Yeah. So this is here. It is. I just pulled the thing up. I, okay. So so he emails my uh, my assistant at church, and she forwards it to me, and he is asking me about the manatee statue, and he's saying that this manatee thing that I have, and I don't know where my parents got it, but it was a gift from my parents years ago. You said they got it on a trip. Yeah, they got it on a trip somewhere. You, you've told me you've you've told because we've argued about this manatee and how stupid it is, and that is hurtful. No, I, I mean like I the, don't understand your negative obsession with the manatee. It's it's beautiful art and it's thematically appropriate for a person who lives near Yellowstone National Park. No, you keep it on your desk and you're trying to make it a thing. The manatee legitimizes itself. This guy, I assume from Florida, writes me a letter and he's like uh, an email. He's like in 2005, Jeb Bush gave a bunch of sculptures from this one particular bronze workplace Shut up. to a whole bunch of people who were friends of the manatees for manatee conservation efforts. He referred to it as a trophy in his email. And he sent me a link to like this declaration of manatee importance from Jeb Bush. Does Adam know about the manatee? Like my friend Adam? The only two friends that I know you have in Wyoming are Adam and Nate. Do either one of those guys know about this? They both know about this. So he's... Yeah, they, they know about it and they support me. Only I only have one friend who isn't being supportive. That's me. Oh, I, I, I mean, I was going to let you just fill in the... But this, yeah. is, this is clearly an Adam or Nate thing. Or me. You think, you think they're... <laughs> well, okay, and that's it, the thing. You think it's this me. Could, I do think it's you. And that's what I'm driving at. So, you sent me this email under the name Tom. I won't say the last name on the one in a hundred chance this is an actual human. So, you sent me this email through a very creative route to trick me into parting ways with the manatee. Whatever. Keep keep going. I, I I will play along. When did when did you get this? I think it came in a few days ago, but I hadn't noticed it until now. Cuz it, it it looked weird the way it came in. Okay. So I noticed it this afternoon. Does it check out? What what did, what did he say specifically? Do you want to know you want to know what you, what it said? Just go to your uh pull up Gmail and go to your sent mail folder. No. <laughs> And just scroll back a couple days. You should be able to find it right there. (laughs) You're you're sending it to me, right? Yeah. If we want to continue on with the illusion, I would be happy to send it to you. Okay. Send it to me. To. Hold on. He's got a Twitter. Yeah. I've been fortunate enough to make money. $750. Dude, there's an actual Twitter account. Yeah. And you put a lot of thought. This is a a long game joke because it's been around for a while. It's clever on your part. Dude, this is April 2011. Well, you know, you have tremendous forethought. Well, who do you think I am? I didn't even know you in April 2011. That is irrelevant to the conversation. So, okay, but bottom line is... Hold on, just uh, stand by. Just let me read this. Okay, so read the thing. Thank you for writing me back. Award. Is the manatee an award? That's what he's saying. Does it have a like a name on it? Uh, no, it does not have a name on it. Uh, the subject line is manatee manatee request. Hello, da da da. I've noticed that uh, I've noticed that Matt Whitman has been using a small manatee award statue on his YouTube's plural. Nice touch. These statues were fabricated by local bronze artist Tam Frignoka. That is an actual local bronze artist. I did look that up as a series of thank you awards to Champions of the Manatee in response to Governor Bush's declaration of Manatee Awareness Month in 2005. And here's the link to the proclamation issued by Governor Bush. I also got one during that event, but last year our movers lost it. I've been searching for quite some time and was wondering if you would be willing to sell it. Save the manatee, Tom. Okay, what's, I mean, what are you asking me here? What is the deal? What I'm saying is, why are you posing as this guy and trying to get my manatee sculpture from me? <laughs> I just thought it would be funny. <laughs> Here's the deal, dude. Like, 100%. This this is what happened. So, last night, I got off of work and I was tired. And I wrote you this thing trying to get your manatee sculpture, right? I thought it would be funny. Um, And I said, hey, blah, 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 I want your manatee sculpture. I just wanted, like, a little rise, like a 10-second rise out of you. <laughs> <laughs> and I signed it Tom Wenton because my sixth grade English teacher's name was Miss Wenton, and I just pulled Tom out of the out of the air. I go online today, 
And I'm like, man, this is silly. Matt hasn't replied. And I created that Gmail address, um, <laughs> manatee statue at gmail.com. <laughs> and, and I did all this, and it was funny, right? I, <laughs> it's very funny. And I talked about how I was from Florida and everything, and I came up with this guy, Tom Wenton. And then later on, I was like, man, I wonder if there's a Tom Wenton. I could go and, like, I could go. I'm just going to Google Tom Wenton and see if there's a Tom Wenton. Turns out the dude is actually in Florida. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And he has a Twitter account, Tom Winton, and he's got like thousands of followers. Dude, that's legit. That's really clever. It was a completely <laughs> stupid prank. I did not make this email address, this uh, this Twitter account. You realize that, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm triangulating that because I really didn't expect it to date to 2011. <laughs> I expected it to be yours. What happened when you saw the Twitter account from 2011? All I saw was that there was a Twitter account. I didn't have time to go to it. Oh, God. So you didn't give it. You didn't actually investigate this. Whatever. I investigated as much as I can subtly under the table while I'm talking with friends over dinner. I'm going back to the garage. You, They're like, <laughs> I'm bored with this. <laughs> Dude, I have to go, Dad. They're going to get home in a few minutes, so let's wrap it up. Yeah, cool? I'm in the same boat. I promise them a mini snicket tonight. Excellent. Okay, so let's tell people where they can find the stuff and do the things, and then we'll uh, we'll go be dads. Well, we've hardly mentioned the website yet. I'm pretty proud of the URL. It's nodumbquestions.fm. And in my brain, I thought, well, you could go with .com, but .fm, because it's like radio, but not radio, and it's on the internet. It's, it's not because .com was taken? It is because no dumb questions.com was taken. <laughs> it was the best I could do. <laughs> it's pretty good. Yeah, so please go to the website. You can subscribe at the website. There's also links there to the subreddit and the Patreon page. So I think in the future we should take questions from people on Patreon. Thoughts on that? I think absolutely. I'm interested to see if anyone can come up with questions that defy the name of our channel. <laughs> I think they There's can. There's got to be some also, dumb question. Um, there has to be some dumb questions. Also, the subreddit. We're going to have discussions for each episode on there. I think that'll be fun. And uh, that's it. Please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. I think we should go for every state. Thoughts? I think we can achieve that. I think eventually we should try to make it look like an election map with every county. Yeah, except they all vote for the same thing. <gasps> oh. Oh. Yeah. Artificial unity. I I think there's a lot of sympathy votes coming my way. And that might not be a good idea in national elections, but it's a really good idea here. I think we should vote for something other than me or you. I think we should vote for something. How about where they're from? That'd be interesting. What do you mean? Like if they're... Hold on. Isn't that the map? Yeah, that does. Isn't the map just yeah, where they're from? Because I feel like it's work. a map. This map is a distribution <laughs> that represents the exact sizes of all the places people could be from by land area. Wait, so you mean like it's a it's a map? Yeah, data is beautiful, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be the humanities guy coming in and helping me there with, you know, geography <laughs> and how population density works. We'll think of something. There'll be a thing you can vote on. It's going to be good. What else do we need to tell people? What, what, what are the calls to action here? What are we doing again? I think it was it. It was the, the website, Patreon, Check. subreddit, Check. and... Check. Um, leaving reviews on iTunes with where you're from so we can draw a map. I think we go countries too. Roger, all of that stuff. That is the tightest outro in the history of podcasting. <laughs> we good? <laughs> We're good. It was fun, man. Catch you soon. Peace out. See you.